Hello. Today in this section, we'll be walking through how to properly normalize a protein of interest using a pan-directed antibody when wanting to analyze a post-translational modification. This type of normalization strategy is often a preferred choice of publication journals when examining post-translational modifications. For the rationale behind using this type of strategy, it would be best to review the earlier lessons in this course. Now here in this example, we have the result of a Western blot experiment loaded into image studio light software. In this experiment, 20 micrograms of lysate was loaded into the first six lanes. Lanes one through three represent samples from non-induced cell lines, and lanes four through six represent samples from cells induced with EGF. The seventh lane is 10 micrograms from a jerkat negative control cell line, and the last lane is a molecular weight standard. After running the gel and transferring to a membrane, a Western blot was performed to detect pan erc protein in the 700 channel, shown here in red, and phospho erc shown here in green, from the 800 channel. After imaging these signals on an Odyssey imager, the image was imported into Image Studio Light. Now for this example, we have already quantified the bands of interest. To recap basic features of how to quantify your own targets of interest, please make sure to review the lessons covering basic quantification. Now once you've gone ahead and quantified in Image Studio Lite, we want to go ahead and take our data and export it to a graphing program. Here I've gone ahead and exported this data set into Microsoft Excel. In Excel, the quantification from the pan erc antibody is placed into one tab, and the quantification from our phospho erc into another. In our normalization analysis, our first step will be to calculate a normalization factor, which will be used to correct the calculated signal values for our phospho erc target. To do this, we'll first want to examine our calculated signal values from our pan erc antibody. When looking at the value from lane to lane, we can see that there is variability in the amount of erc protein that transferred to the membrane, highlighting the importance of doing this normalization step. As we examine these values, we're going to want to find the lane with the highest signal value. In this example, we can see lane 6, shown here, has the highest value compared to other lanes. Once we've calculated and located this value, what we want to do is divide the other lanes by it. This can easily be done in Excel by dividing an adjacent well by that value. So in our example, that value is 56500. By copying and pasting this equation, we can quickly apply the same formula to all lanes in Excel. This calculated value is our normalization factor, which we can type into the table for easy organization. Now that we have this value, we can go ahead and copy this whole data and then go ahead and go into our phospho erc table and paste the values there. Now we'll use this normalization factor to go ahead and correct our non-normalized signal for our phospho erc target. To do this, we'll create a formula in Excel where we go ahead and divide our signal value by that normalization factor. And when we go ahead and apply that formula, we now have a normalized signal for that lane. That same formula can be applied to all lanes in Excel using copy and paste functionality. Now at this point, we have successfully used our pan antibody against ERC to calculate a normalization factor. We then went ahead and used that normalization factor to derive a normalized signal for our phospho ERC target. Now in this example, lanes one through three are replicates, and lanes four through six are replicates of one another. So from here, what we can also do in Microsoft Excel is use Excel function to calculate what the average of these three replicates and standard deviations are. Now in lanes one through three, those were derived from non-induced cell lines, and lanes four through six from induced. Using Excel functions, we can go ahead and find what the average of each of these sets are. as well as what the standard deviation of these each was. So 
So now we've calculated what the average and standard deviation from each data set is. If we want to even go one step further in Microsoft Excel, we can go ahead and select our data set and use charting functionalities to generate plots of our data. Here, if we want, we can go ahead and adjust our chart size. We can add a title. And since we've also calculated our standard deviation, if we want, we can go ahead and also add air bars to highlight that standard deviation. Now, working forward as we do further analysis of this experiment and of these targets, we'll always want to make sure we're using this normalized signal. Those are the basics of how to accurately and precisely normalize a target of interest using a PAN antibody in Image Studio Lite and Microsoft Excel. If you want to learn more about Image Studio Lite, please visit www.lightcore.com slash islite. Thanks for taking the time to watch these lessons and good luck with your own analysis.